gentleman from Kansas and now yield uh, five minutes in recognition to Ms. Stephanie Bice from the state of Oklahoma. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Boyle for hosting this hearing today. And thank you, Director Young, for being here. It looks like we're close to the end. So <laughs> um, I want to start in Ranking Member Boyle's opening remarks uh, or this, this afternoon. He questioned um, or suggested that the U.S. Senate um, would, be, would be considering cutting Social Security. And he read a list of members um, but I didn't hear a single House member mentioned. And in fact, Speaker McCarthy and Republican leadership have expressly stated that they are not interested in cutting Social Security benefits. So I find it a bit insulting um, that the other side of the aisle would be so disingenuous to sort of uh, suggest that that's on the table. Uh, no member that I'm aware of here has, has Sorry, filed would, legislation. Would the general lady yield just for a second? I would She's not. Invoked my name. I, I want to finish my line of questions. Because I do have the quotes right here if she wanted them from House members. There's been, and I wasn't allowed to finish, um, Representative Boyle, there has been no legislation filed to suggest that Social Security benefits are going to be cut. I find it disingenuous to speak to such thing. American, uh, America is facing serious questions about the future with the budget, the debt ceiling, and markets being on the forefront of my constituents' minds. The President's answer to the budget is to make history by raising spending to the highest sustained level in American history, by increasing taxes, to the highest sustained level in American history, and by bringing our nation's deficits to the highest sustained level in American history. This is not the direction the American people want to see our nation go, and this budget shows the president is out of touch and doesn't care. I want to pivot to energy. It's important to the state of Oklahoma. The Small Business Administration recently filed comments critical of EPA's oil and gas methane, I'm sorry, oil and natural gas methane rule. The comment letter states that EPA's proposal will have a significant and disproportionate impact on small businesses. Oklahoma has many small businesses that are part of our oil and gas sector. The EPA's proposed rule will have a devastating impact on the future viability of those businesses. OMB will have an opportunity to weigh in on the EPA's rule before it is published. What will you do to protect small businesses from unreasonable and harmful aspects of the EPA's methane rule? So, Congresswoman, I'm unaware of the letter. I'm happy to look at whatever you receive. Was it from the Small Business Administrator? I believe that is correct. Um, I'd be surprised by that, but I'm happy uh, to look at that. And when it comes into OMB, as you know, it will be an OIR, the Regulatory Office Review. Uh, we will not comment on how we uh, review that regulation, that would be improper. We do take, uh, as part of the 12866 process, from members of Congress, from outside uh, organizations that have an interest in the rule, we do offer meetings uh, to make sure that all of their positions are known and put into the record. So I promise you we will follow that process and make sure we have a robust 12866 process. Thank you. In response to Representative McClintock's questioning earlier, you suggested that oil and gas companies have made record profits this last year and should pay their fair share. Is that accurate? A little more nuance, but I said profits were two hundred billion last year. Can you share? Can you share with members of this committee what the total losses for oil and gas companies were in twenty twenty? Uh, I do not have that, but okay. I'm would you be to surprised to know that with just the five integrated super majors? ExxonMobil, BP, Shell, Chevron in total. The posted combined total losses for those five entities was $76 billion in 2020 in one year. And the reason I bring that up is that um, it is, it is uh, surprising to me that this administration would think that taxing the oil and gas industry uh, would be a, a viable option uh, in raising revenue. As you know, Yes, oil and gas companies have been able to make a profit this last year, but this is a cyclical market. I come from the great state of Oklahoma where 25% of our oil and gas, or I'm sorry, of our state revenues come from oil and gas. Some years it's great, some years it's really bad, and 2020 was one of those years. There were a record number of bankruptcies in the oil and gas industry. 
uh, record number of job losses. And so to suggest that taxing the oil and gas industry is a way for, um, for you to be able to, to have a, a bigger budget and to, to a larger spend, I think is a detriment to the American people because at the end, that's going to require us increasing goods and services cost. Uh, and that's the, a hit to the uh, uh, Americans' pocketbooks. So, Mr. Chairman, with that, thank you. I yield back. I thank the gentleman.